Hello again, everyone. Today I am going to be swatching some handmade watercolor from a company called Wild Thorn. And I think they are in um, Santa Cruz, California, but I'm not entirely sure. And um, they have very interesting watercolors, not watercolors that you could find any everywhere else. And they have different colors and that sort of thing. Um, I don't know what their light fastness is. Um, I wouldn't probably, for any handmade paint, unless I knew that it was light fast, I probably wouldn't use it on something outside of a sketchbook. But uh, uh, you can, you could put it behind UV glass or something. And these might be, um, these might be light fast. I just don't know. Actually, um, fun fact, <laughs> a company that I'm often uh, profiling on the channel just tested, just got done testing all of their uh, watercolors in sunlight and they found that 99 point whatever percent of it, I think there was like one color that didn't stand up and they they pointed that out and that's deep, deep light. They they have tested their watercolors for light fastness and you know, for a year, if, if, they, if they keep their colors for a year, you're probably uh, can have some pretty good peace of mind as far as them lasting uh, a fairly decent amount of time. All right, well, that's that's about light fastness, but I'm going to be swatching these watercolors for you. And for the life of me, I cannot remember the set that this is. <laughs> the person who labels these, the um, their, their handwriting is really hard to read. I will put a link to Wildthorn below. They don't always have the same colors or the same palettes. So uh, you may go and they wouldn't have this and they only restock occasionally. Um, and that's part of why I haven't focused on them before on the channel, just because um, it's not necessarily exclusive, but they're, they're fairly rare as far as their updates to their shop. But uh, get on their mailing list and, and if you're interested and you will get notifications. But it comes with all of this packaging. So all of this was wrapped up in a nice little package and then they put all these little dried flowers in there, which I'm now gonna put off to the side. And they even put another one here and a little rose petal that was actually inside the, the watercolor container. Um, so they really kind of go overboard on the packaging um, sort of in a nice way. And then the actual little uh, watercolor uh, pan or what, whatever this is called <laughs> um, case was uh, surrounded by this paper and then there's a little wax seal and then there's a little crystal with <laughs> all kinds of stuff. So you get a lot of little tchotchkes <laughs> in addition and I actually use these in mixed media so I'll, I'll, I will definitely use them. I'm not going to throw them away. Uh, okay so let's get in here and it always comes with a little swatch sheet. The uh, spaces are kind of small for the swatches and I usually don't, even if I swatch them originally on this, I don't usually end up keeping this with the watercolors because oftentimes I'll just spread them out to different um, palettes. Okay, so I am going to, okay, these look like they are, um, okay, so I think we have, Time, if I'm reading that correctly, geranium, yarrow, um, amethyst, something amethyst. Uh, I'm not sure if that says lac. I'm not sure. And then this is velvet black. So um, I was actually partially able to read those. So I'm going to unwrap them and then I am going to swatch them on my usual pentallic field book. I have a brush here and some a pot of water off to the side. And different companies have varying degrees of ease as far as <laughs> opening handmade watercolors. Um, this is probably, they're probably kind of in the middle. Uh, sometimes I find it a little difficult to open their uh, watercolors, but you know, eventually I get in there. And what is nice is they include magnets as well. So, okay, this is labeled as velvet black. I'm gonna put that off to the side. I probably won't keep these. Um, I've decided to try to try to cut down on the things that I'm keeping just because I keep so much junk and I just, <laughs> I just kinda wanna simplify a little bit. I might end up trying to do the Marie Kondo thing. I don't know. Um, 
I've done it before and um, I got rid of mostly clothes at the time, but uh, it might be good to do that again for the whole ha house. Um, yeah, I'm still not really certain what color this is, but it's a, it's sort of a muted green. And so I'm trying to get in here and just push them out because that seems to be a little easier than trying to unwrap them more carefully. Um, and there's a word before this, but amethyst is the one I can make out. So these were sort of pastel-y colors. Uh, I think they're a little, you know, a little less than pastel maybe, but um, they were super pretty in the swatches that they showed. So this, I think it says yarrow, which I would have expected to be yellow, but it's pink. Uh, and actually when I was reading the name, I didn't remember that there would, was a pink in this collection. So um, anyway, maybe it's the flowers are, are pink. Don't know. And this one, I don't know again. Okay, that one's stuck just a little bit. And this I think is time, which since we already had the green, oh yeah, this, so this is a deeper green. So, all right, oh my God. <laughs> This, this one in particular looks like it might have benefited from going in the freezer perhaps because sometimes with handmade watercolors, this can happen where your paper can kind of stick to the watercolor if it's not fully set or fully dry. And some pigments just do that naturally. Um, but there we go. And I'm, I'll probably use that actually to get our sample from. Let me just put a little water on there. I'm gonna put a little water on um, all the other pans, just to drop a piece. And let's go ahead and start with this one that I'm gonna get off the label here. So, okay, fairly subtle. Um, this hasn't really had time to work on itself too much yet, so really pretty though. I'm gonna still try to get more pigment off of this paper here. Yeah, I probably would let these sit a little longer, but there you go. So that's a really beautiful green. All right, I'm just gonna put that off to the side. And actually let's do the other greenish color, even if they're in a different place in the palette watercolor palette. That's the word I was looking for. Man, life has been kind of stressful lately, so I've been having issues with kind of forgetting the words for things just because I have like so many different things on my mind and I'm having a hard time. That is lovely. So it's sort of like a grayish green. Uh, you got a little bit of glare there, but hopefully, actually let me put these watercolors aside so that we can so that I can move this this way and show you a little bit more of the color there. Really super pretty. And, um, you know, with, with handmade watercolor, oops, sorry, I almost spilled that on the floor. With handmade watercolor companies, I really do try to focus on companies that, or, you know, I say companies, but usually they're sort of like a small one person show. Um, I try to focus on companies that have sort of different colors that I'm not seeing everywhere else. Okay, so that's that lovely yarrow color. That is super nice, really nice pink, pinky, pinky peachy color. Okay, and then this looks like a bit of an earth tone. Let's see if that is correct. Yeah, so this looks kind of like a Venetian red maybe, sort of in that family. Very pretty yet again. Okay, and then we'll go with this purpley tone here. And yes, clearly letting the water sit for a little longer helped. So this is kind of a muted, a muted purple, which is generally what I like anyway. Although I've been liking more, um, more uh, subtle colors or, uh, you know, pastel-like colors. And then there is that velvet black. Always interesting to have 
<clears throat> sort of a different black. And you can see I, I kind of got little spots here from the thing because when I get my brush really super wet, it tends to um, brush around really easily. So these definitely dry pretty flat. Um, and I'm not sure what the binder is here, so I'm not sure if they're vegan or not. So you might wanna check that out on the website. This one in particular, it looks like it has a little bit of um, granulation going on down there, which is really quite nice. I'm not really seeing a lot of granulation in the other colors, but that wasn't necessarily why I got this set. It was more for the colors themselves, but these are super pretty and I'll probably distribute these uh, amongst some other watercolor sets. Generally, I do that, try and uh, put colors together that would be good in, in palettes with other colors. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I will put a link down below to Wild Thorn, and I don't think there's really much else to put a link to other than maybe the Pentallic Field Book today. All right, well, like this video if you enjoyed, and uh, feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. I hope you, I hope to see you next time, but I was saying, oh, there's actually some granulation showing up in this other green as well. Sorry. <laughs> I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.